A Tall Shark, Galactic Memories, Atlantis, Channel by Suzanne Light, Ph.D. April 1, 2012. The Atlantean Temple of Art, Communication and Healing. I remember first entering this temple as a small frightened child and living here until the fall of our great world. I observe this temple now from the perspective of the one who will be ascending. I take a long moment to look back on so many, in fact, too many earthly incarnations since the great fall. There were, of course, some lives worth noting in which I was able to return to my soul and the higher worlds upon my translation. Unfortunately, I can also see many lives in which my soul was unattainable at the time of my passing and untold lifetimes were spent in the lower astral plane atoning for mistakes created by my fear and greed during that incarnation. I am happy that second death, the death of soul, was outlawed sometime in the long night between the death of Atlantis and the dawning of the life in which my form is right. I am sure that, had that second death not been released from our incarnational pattern, that I would not be here today writing these words. I know that I was seldom evil in nature, but the fear of the polarized reality led me to make despicable actions. Glory be to the one that I have, somehow, survived my long journey into duality. I sound as though I am quite miserable, but actually, I am very happy. It is just that when I looked upon the beginning of my earthly sojourns, I finally feel strong enough to face all the fear through which I have lived. My beloved Arcturian family has challenged me to live for one week with no fear, and I have gone several days in this manner. Blessings be. After my long introduction I will proceed with my memory of a tall, shot now. The spelling is phonetic, as this mind no longer remembers the language of that age, nor the light pictures within, which we preserved our thoughts and emotions. As I enter the temple English word I am first struck by its welcoming aroma. It reminds me of an atmosphere free of pollutants of my day and water made of a different molecular structure than the waters of my present incarnation. I am greeted by huge flower arrangements, again flowers that I have drawn many times but not seen in this reality. Gravity is much different here, as we have not fallen into the lowest depths of the third dimension that my present incarnation was at the time of that birth. Fortunately, it did improve greatly as I walked through that life. The first thing I see Remember is that there are no angular walls or rooms. Everything is built in a circular flowing fashion, much as light flows in circles. In fact, the light within this temple is very unique in that it has no obvious source of light. In all the years that I spent in this structure I've never saw a light structure, similar to modern day lamps. In fact, the light won't never turn on or off, it just was. The light in the temple seemed to respond to our consciousness in that it became brighter if we needed it to be. On the other hand, the light would automatically dim whenever we needed the lower light. As I move through the temple I hear very little conversation, and remember that we only used our voices in the speaking quarters. The rest of the time we lived in verbal silence to encourage the use of our telepathy, empathy and higher perceptions. We all had great psychokinetic abilities and could easily levitate with the slightest shift in our consciousness. In fact, the problem for me was keeping my feet on the ground. As I moved through the temple, I remembered the deep sorrow of the first years of that life because I was separated from my complement. Interestingly, as I have come to the long-awaited conclusion of my experience in third-dimensional form, I have again connected with my beloved. However, Beloved is much different here in the land of illusion and strife than it was in our fifth dimensional realities when we experimented with separating into two beings. In the third dimension, it was not a game. It was lonely beyond understanding, then difficult once we reunited. But, I have drifted again away from my return to it all. It is just that with Pluto, on my son, I feel a deep urge to review my many earthly incarnations. To release what is over and bring forward that which will serve the growth of my new life. Oh, I hear the music now. The music in it all was beyond the sound, as it was not yet differentiated from light. Hence, music was a flowing, dynamic dance of light and sound. It was a bridge upon which we could cross into the frequency, which best served our healing and or advancement into the light. In fact, in it all, advancement into the light and healing were the same. We saw disease injury, or psychological disease as a blockage in our aura, which hindered our spiritual process. 
As I walk, float around a bend in the corridor, I burst forth in joy as I enter the resonance of light music. The tones and colors pull me out of my imaginary vessel and my consciousness intermingles with the frequencies of light music. I am the music, I am the room, I am the corridor, and I am a tall shamar. I remember how, as a child, my guides had to be with me in this area of a tall, as I could never stay in my body. In fact, staying in my body has been a challenge for all my earthly incarnations. I would leave it if I was afraid, in love, joyful sick or strong. Finally, in the life in which I will transmute it into a higher frequency, I am learning to stay in my body. But, once more, I digress. I see myself now in one of my favorite places, the place where my consciousness would fly when it left my body, the floating gardens. I look around the floating gardens to see the many elementals tending it. I see the face of each flower and the delicate roots floating just above the soil. I can't see the ethers in between the roots and the soil, just as I can see that which is in between the many people and objects of my temple home. I guess I always came here, as it, too, was connected to the physical only by etheric essence. From the garden, I can't see the many kind veils surrounding our temple. Each kind veil resonates to a different frequency, creating a beautiful spectrum of colors, similar yet different from the colors of my present life. Each kind veil has a different aroma to match that frequency of water, just as each flower had a different aroma to match its form and color. I have chosen to revisit a doll, at a point in my Atlantidan incarnation, that was my happiest. I had finally accustomed to a body of gender and had not yet loved and lost. We knew that the end times were coming for our great civilization, but did not know exactly when that would happen. We knew that too many of us the end times would be great freedom as we would return to the unity. On the other hand, for those of us who had come to assist Gaia, we would stay with her body, until the time of planetary ascension. This meant that would have many lives waiting for the time that my present incarnation is now living. Before I end my visit, I turn to her and look directly into her eyes. Yes, she began her visit as her present persona and, somehow, became me the one whom she has always been. We are one again now. The beginning has become the end, and the end is actually a new beginning. As I look into her eyes, the windows to her soul, I merge with her to become one again and forever. Alpha and Omega meet to usher in a new age. Atal Shamar Channel by Suzanne Lai, Ph.D. Website, SuzanneLaiPhD.blogspot.com Website, Darkturians.Starseeds.blogspot.com